Hello everyone, welcome to the video walkthrough of my 2020 online quest. So this is something I'm known to do from time to time, an online quest for my friends and strangers alike, a kind of a series of puzzles where one riddle leads to another and only through their ingenuity and skill does one reach the final level. I just ran one in the spring of 2020, when most of the world was already in some level of lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I thought that a distraction from the daily worries would be welcomed by my friends, and indeed it was. The quest has 15 levels, and I will now show you my intended solutions to all of them. This video is about 25 minutes long, but in practice the record time I've seen to reach the last level was a solid half day. With that, let's go. The quest kicks off with a YouTube video which I've sent to my friends. The video and the audio is just a distraction, but if you look at the description below, it does look like gibberish, but it also looks like a simple letter substitution cipher and if you try to decode it using Roth 13, which is one of the simplest of them all, it does work and it does produce this text. So now we have this text here and it has a URL to the next level. This is how all of the levels are linked together. When you solve a level, you'll get a URL to the next level. Before we jump to the next one, however, let's just note a certain hint here, because it might be useful later. The URL goes like this, and it doesn't work. What if I try to spell the number as an actual number? Okay, that does work and it gives him this image, which doesn't seem to have anything interesting in it. However, if I look at the page source, um, it actually tells me exactly what to do. I'm just going um, to download this file and have a look inside to inspect it. I'm going to be using um, command line a lot in this video, but I promise there is no Kung Fu, so hopefully it will be easy enough to follow along. If I download this file and open it in a text editor, nothing interesting at the top, but if I go to the end of the file, the level free URL is right there. There is also another way to look for interesting strings in binary files, uh, which is the strings program. If I run that on this image, it produces a lot of strings and also, again, the same level free URL. Level free was a pretty fun diversion, and so many people told me that they got stuck because my domain name has expired. I mean, it does look intentionally pretty genuine. Using the clumsiness hint draws attention to these ads here because many of them have typos. I wonder if we see all there is to see, so let's inspect the page structure. So ads are served from this iframe, which has a vertical height set. If I make it a bit higher, another link appears, and that's the link that we need to get to level 4. Level 4 is another image-based riddle, but it's a bit more different this time, because the solution is hidden in the visual image uh, data itself. Let's download the image and open it up in an image editor. I'm using Pixelmator here because it's easy to use, but you could be using anything else that has basic levels or curves adjustments like GIMP. Now, if you play with the levels a little bit to compress the range and add more contrast to the image, the level 5 URL reveals itself in the bottom left corner. You can see it right here. This is a somewhat famous quote. It's actually a mnemonic for the first 15 digits of pi, if you just follow the number of letters in each word. Uh, so let's make use of pi, and let's just type that in. Oops, that looks like domain squatters to me. Well, actually this isn't the same trick used in level 3, because that is not how you spell number pi, right? You need to put the period in the right place. And that is level 6. Dig is a command line program that queries DNS servers. So let's point it to the domain name that's asking us to. 
not there try any records we have this reverse URL here um, so let's unreverse it and that's the level 7 URL Wow, this looks pretty interesting. Let's start with the images at the top. The first object on the left is a pineapple. Let's upload the second image to Google Images Search. Maybe that will help us understand its meaning. Right, it says Lajban, but what is Lajban? Turns out it is a constructed language, so two images combined means pineapple and Lajban. So we need a Lajban dictionary to perform this translation. Here, if I put in pineapple, I find that the large band for pineapple is this word here, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. If I go back to the page, there is the text snippet as well. It does look base64 encoded, so let's dig deeper. I will use the file program, which is good at identifying all sorts of file-based things. In this case, it even tells me that this is OpenSSL encrypted with a password. So I have a feeling that this word here is our password. And now I just need to feed that into OpenSSL. I need to use the right cipher in a hash algorithm. And I'm just going to use some defaults here, some pretty sane values. And let's put our password in there and that works this gives us the url to level eight um, but it also has this phrase here which i assume is in lajban so let's try to understand what that means in english it does mean one language is never enough i think those are true words Turns out that if I click on this lovely cloud icon, an ambient rain sound will start playing. So let's explore this further. It's just coming for this mp3 file. Let's download that. I am going to open this file in Audacity, which is a free open source audio editor, but you could be using anything that can show waveforms and play the audio back. Now, what do you know? These four spikes certainly look interesting. Let's see what is hiding there. But not what you're looking for. Yeah, so that's not the one we're looking for. Well, let's just try this one. HTTP colon slash slash bitly slash three nine uppercase November uppercase kilo uppercase Sierra uppercase Oscar uppercase Zulu. And that was the level nine URL. Hi, Matraska doll. I wonder what that could refer to. Let's have a look at the page source. Well, this looks so obviously base64 encoded. So let's put that to a file and let's see what is hiding behind it. I'm just going to decode it and then run the file utility on it. And it tells me this is gzip compressed. I have a feeling this might be a tarball. So let's try to uncompress it. All right, that worked. And it has this new directory here called never gonna. Let's see what is inside. A DMG file. Now what is a DMG file? 
it turns out it is this Mac disk image format. And if you are on a Mac, you could just mount it in Finder, but I kind of want to do it in a cross-platform way. So I'm going to use 7-zip on the command line. And that gives me another directory in here. That kind of looks interesting. Never going to give you up. Sounds like um, a beginning of a pretty popular song. I keep doing this. There is a bzip compressed tarball. There is a 7-zip archive. I keep going deeper and deeper into the Matruska. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you... Well, that is certainly something that you might have heard before. Okay, that's a RAR file. Let's unrar this. RAR is pretty old, by the way. Okay, and that's Word. So that's... That's kind of different. That's not what should be there. But let's see what is the Matruska file in this case. It was just a zip file. So let's unzip it. Okay. Oh, it needs a password. wonder what the password could be. I kind of think back to these directory names again. So let's just put in the right word in there. Let's just complete the phrase instead of the word. Let's just use the word down. And that decompresses successfully. So we have this instructions file now. Let's have a look in there. Okay, it has some video for us. Let's check it out. Oh, you were never expecting this, were you? Okay, well, that's enough. And it also has the URL to level 10. That is a lot of cheese. So we have all of these cheese photos here. We have the descriptions. And if you click on the cheeses, it takes you to a form where you have to put a code. That's not the right code, of course. So I have to find what the right code is. And you could spend a lot of time looking at all of these cheeses and all of the detail. And if you do, you will eventually notice that there is this QR code that kind of looks a bit out of place. Turns out if I scan this with an app like Google Authenticator, it will generate a one-time password for me. And if I put that back into the form, it will validate and will take me to level 11. This once more looks like a substitution cipher and indeed it is. There are many ways to have it go at this, like looking at letter frequencies, and that would work for the text actually, but if you look right here, there are these phone numbers, and I have a feeling that it is the phone numbers that are gates to level 12. And unfortunately, frequency analysis won't help you decode the digits. So instead, let's think back to the hint from the very first level, which mentioned certain clumsiness, and let's see if there is anything clumsy about this level. Let's have a look at the page source. So that's the text we've already seen. It also references a CSS file. Let's have a look at the CSS file. Well, that's interesting. So it specifies this custom font, which is loaded from a file. But if I look at the page, it certainly doesn't use a custom font. It's just the standard font, the default font. And it also has this weird extension, woof. So let's see if that is the extension that we should expect for web fonts. Well, it should be WAF, not WOOF. And if I look at that, it's not only the extension that is wrong, but there is also a typo in the name itself. So let's verify if that is the issue. I'm just going to reload the page and look at the network tab in Chrome. And as I do, indeed, it tells me that the font file is not found, which is why I'm not seeing it applied on the text. So let's dig deeper and let's try to fix this issue. And one way to fix that is to make a local copy of these files and fix the typos and then load them again. So I'm going to download all of these files. Next, I will edit the CSS file. I will fix these two typos here, regular and WAF. That should be right. 
and I'm also going to download the same file. And if I can download it, that will tell me that this is exactly the way to solve it. And it did download, so that's right. Now let's just open this fixed local version in Chrome and let's see what happens. Well, what do you know? This actually works and it shows us a text. So what happens here is that this custom font had glyphs for the code points and it effectively does this visual decoding. And now we have this phone number. So we're just going to call it to get into level 12. Well, we have to call that number. So I'm going to do that on my phone right here and we'll see what happens. Enter the passcode, please. Hmm, wonder what that could be. Wrong. 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 Okay, so we missed something. Let's go back and check it again. So the phone number is obviously right because we got something. And then, okay, it says use 7615 as the code. So let's do this again. Enter the passcode, please. That's uh, 7615. Welcome to the level 12 quiz. You'll be asked a series of questions, each of which will require a four digit number answer, so get your keypad ready. You'll have limited time to answer each question, and a single incorrect answer will take you out of the game, and you'll have to start over. If you somehow manage to win, we'll text you the link to the next level, so please call from a number that can receive SMS to avoid disappointment. Now, get ready and good luck. Question number one. When was Wheelit Packard founded? Hope that's right, 39. Congratulations. That was correct. Question number two. When did the dot com bubble peak? Congratulations. That was correct. Question number three. When was the iPhone released? Congratulations. That was correct. Question number four. Two to the tenth. Congratulations. That was correct. Question number five. Two to the fourteenth minus two to the thirteenth. Congratulations. That was correct. You have now answered five questions correctly and have reached the end of the game. We'll text you the link to the next level. Have a good day. Phew, that was pretty intense. And the next thing I know, I get a message with a link to level 13. If you've ever used the Git revision control system, you will realize that this looks like a bare Git repository, which you can clone into a local repository. So let's do that. Let's have a look at what is inside. So the readme file has this funny language and mentions lol code. Gosh, I hope I don't have to end up debugging lol code code. Looking at the change history, there's something that catches my eye and mentions URL and we want a URL. If I look at that change in particular, 
it has this URL. Well, let's see if that's the right one. Okay, certainly not the right one. It looks like a diversion. Let's, we need to keep looking. So one thing I can do is I can look at the full log that would include all of the branches. So I see that there is this laws branch, which looks promising. Let's see what change has been made on that branch. And this change has a new URL, which in fact is the URL to level 13. This presents us with a .class file, which is a Java class file, contains Java bytecode. I would not suggest that you run random class files that you've downloaded from the internet. So instead, let's try to um, disassemble it and see what is inside. It has a main method, which means you can run it as a, a program. So there are some methods, some private methods. And it seems like it does some parsing of numbers, probably command line arguments, and there is this URL prefix, it's probably some seed. And it does some string manipulation or a string constant. Supposedly this gets printed um, when you succeed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Java decompiler, and there are many of these, I'm just using one of one of the one of three open source ones. I'm going to load the class file and that will try to decompile it and give me a Java code. It should be a pretty readable Java code, so we can probably figure out what's going on there. Okay, so that looks pretty readable. And there's the main method. What it does is it parses the first command line argument and two things have to be true. It calls the test method. And it's pretty easy to see that this does primality checking. Pretty naive, simple, but primality checking. The second test is that this argument has to be equal to the value returned by the test2 method with a parameter of 10 million. What does test2 do? Well, it makes use of the test method, which again is primality checking. And it's pretty obvious that it just finds the largest prime number starting with a parameter, which in this case is 10 million. So in other words, the argument has to be a prime and it has to be the largest prime lesser than 10 million. And I just happen to know what that number is. Um, so of course, it's not one to three, but let's just try that. The real value is 99, 99, 91. And that does the decoding of the salt and prints it to write URL. And this is the URL to level 15. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the very last level so I'm not sure if I should really have called this level 15 because all this has is a form where you can put in your name and put yourself on the leaderboard. Not going to do that here. Just wanted to show you the current state of the leaderboard. That has 11 names, friends of mine and friends of my friends. So congratulations to the people who've made it here. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I have enjoyed making this quest and the video very much. This is certainly not the last quest I'm doing. If you want to be on the list for the next one, email me. My email is in the video description below and hopefully you will be on the leaderboard next time. Thank you so much.